Hey everyone and welcome back to Jungle. It's me the Jungle King and this is Pandacorn. So this is Pandacorn, a PCB badge that looks like a fusion between a panda and a unicorn. It's an 80 tiny 13 powered PCB badge that drives six blue LEDs with the help of a simple MOSFET as a switch setup. The state of MOSFET is controlled by a tap of a button. On the first tap, the LEDs start to fade in and out in a constant loop. On the second tap, the LEDs start their blinking sequence. And on the third tap, the LEDs turn low. And this tapping thing goes in a loop. Tap 1, tap 2, tap 3, then repeat. I've designed this badge in such a way that the LEDs on the bottom side will be visible from the top side. Not LEDs will be visible, but their glow is visible through the PCB as I have left an opening in the top solder mask area and soldered the LEDs inverted so they would shine right through the FR4 board. I saw this technique in a PCB badge on Tindy and it was looking so great that I had this idea of making a glowing unicorn horn with the same method. So I prepared this panda corn PCB badge. So in this video, I will be showing you guys the whole build process of this PCB badge. Also, I have made similar projects in recent month, which you can also check out if you're interested in these badge based projects. Now, without taking too long, let's get started. The first step of making anything is to visualize or think about what you have to make. Like in my case, I wanted to make a panda and unicorn hybrid animal PCB. So I prepared this illustration in which there's a panda with a horn, which is apparently borrowed from a unicorn fella. This horn will have LEDs on it or behind it. At first, I prepared this 555 timer IC setup for the PCB. But later, I discarded it and used the ATtiny 13A setup, which was this. I prepared this schematic in my PCB designing suit. The setup was relatively simple. We have an ATtiny 13A connected with an N-channel MOSFET. The N-channel MOSFET is driving six LEDs, which are all connected in parallel with each other. ATtiny 13A and these LEDs are then powered by a coin cell or a USB port which are both connected in parallel so two power source can be used to power this mighty badge. After finalizing this schematic I then prepared its PCB board. Now for the illustration of the panda corn I used this image which I found on Google. I imported this image in my PCB design on the top sill screen layer so I could add a graphically pleasing image on the PCB board to make it more fun and less gloomy, more like an art piece. After getting the basic shape ready, I place all the SMD components on the bottom side of board. From the top side, only the sill screen will be visible and all the components will be placed on the bottom side. I added 0603 package LEDs in this PCB, but I have used a 0805 pad. This is because I will solder the 0603 LEDs in an oriented position with soldering iron. So it's better to add a wider pad for convenience. Anyways, I then connected all the tracks and completed this PCB. I then exported its Gerber data and sent it to a PCB manufacturer for samples. I uploaded the Gerber data to the PCB Ways code page. I wanted to do something different this time, so I choose a blue solder mask. I generally get PCBs in white solder mask, but this time I choose a blue one. I received PCBs in a week and overall PCB quality was great, which was expected as PCB way always offer quality stuff. I've been using their PCB service for a year now and my review of them is still the same. PCB quality is always high, which is a plus point. PCB way, well done you guys. Check out PCB way for getting great PCB service at a less cost. Next is the assembly process of this badge. First we add solder paste on each component pad. I am using this generic solder paste with a solder paste dispensing syringe. Then we add components to their assigned place one by one. 
you could see the schematic of this project for the precise location of each component. After adding components to their location, we carefully lift this PCB and put it on a SMT hot plate, which is this. I made this hot plate for these custom PCBs as the hot plate available in market is not exactly cheap. You can check out my video about this topic. But anyways, the hot plate heats this PCB from below up to the solder paste melting temperature. As soon as the PCB reaches that temperature, solder paste melts and all the components get soldered to their pads. We carefully lift this PCB and try not to shake it as the solder paste is still melted and the components might stray from their location if moved too much. We lift this PCB and then place it on a cooler surface for a little bit to cool down the heat of PCB. Here's an additional process. We have to add LEDs in an oriented position by hand, which means that we have to turn LEDs 180 degrees and then solder it to the provided pads one by one with a soldering iron. Precaution here is not to overheat the PCB or it will melt. Just be quick and use a lower temperature like 280 degrees Celsius to melt the solder paste or solder wire. After placing the LEDs, we can now place the remaining THT components like USB port, header pin, coin cell holder and the power off and on switch. And our PCB is finally completed. But wait, it doesn't work just yet as we still have to flash the ATtiny 13A to fill it up with some sweet sweet line of code. For that, I have to use this Arduino as ISP programmer to burn the bootloader of ATtiny and then flash it with the provided sketch. You can check out this project's page for more detail about this process. I have uploaded the Arduino as ISP sketch to this Arduino Nano board. I have added a capacitor between its reset and ground pin so it won't go back into reset mode. Then I added 80 tiny SPI pins to the D10, D11, D12 and D13 pins in this wiring schematic. Then we go to Arduino IDE, add the core files for the 80 tiny, select the board which is in my case 80 tiny 13, choose the right programmer and then burn bootloader. After this we open the sketch that we want to upload, we go to the sketch menu, hit the upload using programmer and our code will get uploaded to the ATtiny 13A. As for the power source of this badge, I added a coin cell holder, so I could power it with the generic CR2032 cell. But I also added a USB port to this setup, so I can power it up with a 5V 1A charger. Both of these sources works, but the coin cell is more practical as if you want to wear it with an ID card strap or add this badge on your keychain. You could just power it up with the coin cell and it will look pretty sick. But a charger won't work with the wearable stuff. As you can see, this badge is working nicely. LEDs are visible through the FR4 board, which makes this badge even better. For now, I haven't made any mistake in this PCB version, so I don't think there will be another revision of this Panda Corn badge. But maybe I could prepare an another version with a 555 timer IC setup to reduce its overall cost, as using 80 tiny 13 would add one dollar to the bill of material. Anyways, this is it for today, guys. Check out this project's page for more details, and I'll be back with another project soon. Stay safe and peace out.